going on, everybody? It's your boy, Keenan. and welcome to the Pro Football Exclusive College Football Blog. Continuing my previews of all the major BCS conferences in college football, today I need to talk about the Pac-12 Conference. Now, the biggest news in this conference is USC, ranked number one on preseason poll. They have a great team coming up into this season, led by quarterback Matt Barkley, who is the frontrunner for this year's Heisman Trophy. Now, they were out last season. They weren't, they weren't able to make it to the Pac-12 Championship due to the suspension um, for previous um, violations that they had, but they are back this season, and this might be the team that can finally break that stride in the BCS National Championship, where we've seen for the past six seasons, the SEC conference has represented the champion of, of, of college football and I really think this could be the year a different new conference team will break that that on um, the street. Now USC can be that squad. They have so many weapons coming back especially with the surprise announcement that Matt Barkley will be back for his senior season. Now there's a couple other news I need to talk about in, in the Pac-12. Two new quarterbacks is going to be taking over great quarterbacks that they had starting with Oregon. Darren Thomas is no longer with the team. He went undrafted in the NFL. So Brian Brent Bennett is going to take over the starting the quarterback position and he's going to help lead this team to more victories to help out Chip Kelly and hopefully win a second, another consecutive Pac-12 championship. This kid that can do it. He did have six touchdowns last season with zero interceptions. This kid has good poise, good feet, and I think he can take over the job pretty well and make a good name for himself. And the other quarterback, um, um, the, everybody knows about Stanford um, quarterback Andrew Luck. He went number one overall to the Indianapolis Colts. And now Brett Nottingham is now going to get that starting quarterback position for the um, Cardinals. I think he could do a decent job. I'm not particularly sure. He is a he was rated the number four high school pro style quarterback in the nation when he, according to Rivals.com when he was in high school. This kid does have a strong arm, and I really hope he could be a good replacement for Andrew Luck. I don't really have too much um, um, comp um, um, swag and confidence about this kid, but this kid can um, be develop to be, become a good quarterback for the Cardinals, especially when they have a good running back core led by Stephon Taylor. Um, helping them leading the way in the running game. He has good running backs behind him, so that could open up more options in the passing game, which means Nottingham can take advantage of that. But we will see coming up the first week. Now, I have a bunch of impact players that need to talk about coming up this season. I already talked about Matt Barkley, Heisman Trophy front runner. This kid had over 3,000 yards for the past couple of seasons, passing for the Trojans, and he will help lead his way, hopefully, to an undefeated season and a national championship. And he has two outstanding receivers, preseason all-Americans, Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. I really think they could be both become first-team All-Americans this season. Both of them had over a thousand yards receiving last season and over 20 touchdowns to combine. These two are a big-time threat. Robert Woods came off the bat during his freshman freshman season, and he ended up progressing over the years at, throughout his career at USC. But some people even believe that Marquise Lee could be better than Robert Woods because of his speed. There were a lot of deep ball um, opportunities that he had last season, and he took advantage of them with his speed, especially that big game against Oregon. Marquise Lee is a monster. Some people believe that he's a better receiver than Robert Woods. I do like that um, wide receiver duel between the two players. You also need to go back to Oregon. The Anthony Thomas, Mr. All-Purpose himself, he had exploded with two long touchdown runs in the Rose Bowl game last season, and he's coming into his sophomore year. He had over 1,100 yards of total offense last year, and he's looking to break um, break more stride with, Pat, with catching the football outside of the backfield as a receiver and being that all-purpose threat, the big, one of the biggest home run threats in college football. He needs to go to the Washington Huskies. They have a great quarterback in Keith Price. He had a spectacular season, and some people, including myself, were surprised that he outplayed and, and beat Nick Montana for the start quarterback position, and he had over 25 touchdowns passing, and I really think he's going to make an injured major impact for Steve Tarkeesian and the Huskies in that offense. Also, another receiver I need to talk about from Cal, Keenan Allen. He was their leading receiver the last season. He was in the top five on receivers this season in the Pac-12 Conference. A lot of great receivers coming out of this conference, and I do like Keenan Allen's feet. He will be that go-to guy for Zach Maynard in that Bear offense. Now, I have a couple of breakout player performers that I believe can have a breakout season this year, starting with Kenyon Barnard, the running back for the Oregon Ducks. He will be replacing on um, now, Michael James, and he will be split in time with the Anthony Thomas, but I really think he's going to rush for over at least 1,200 yards this season. He's a spectacular running back, a little bit underrated, and I think he's going to do well this season in combination with Thomas. I already mentioned about Brian Bennett. I think he's going to have a great year, at least 2,500 yards passing to go along with maybe four, maybe 
500 yards rushing. I do like this kid a lot. This kid has just a little bit of swag and a little bit of confidence coming off a great season last year, winning the Rose Bowl, and he had, like I said, six intercept six touchdowns with zero picks that could boost up his confidence and just get his swag going for the Ducks in that offense. We need to talk about Jeff Toole. He's going to be the quarterback for Mike Leach's spread offense at Washington State. And another impact player I forgot to talk about, Marquise Wilson. He's one of the leading receivers of, of, um, this season in the Pac-12, and he's going to be that go-to guy for Jeff Toole, and Toole's going to have a good season because of Marquise Wilson. Now, another breakout player that I think he's going to have a good year is Cameron Marshall, the running back out of Arizona State. Give a shout-out to my man Justin Godfrey of Pro Football Exclusive. Got a shout-out one of his guys from Arizona State, one of the Sun Devils. He had over 1,000 yards rushing last season, 4.7 yards per carry. And now with Brock Osteweiler out to the NFL with the Denver Broncos, all eyes is going to be more at, at um, Cameron Marshall. He's going to be the biggest offensive threat for the Sun Devils offense. Also, going on to the defensive side, two studs who I believe that could have stud seasons at defensive end, both at USC, Wes Horton and Devin um, Kennard. Both, um, both these guys had combined for just six sacks last season, but I think because they're becoming veterans and more experienced with that Trojan defense, I think, especially with, and also with Nick Perry out in the NFL, out to the NFL with the Green Bay Packers, both these players can work well together and help out the interior D-line of the Trojan defense, and I think both these players can have great seasons. Also, one last thing to talk about for impact players. I need to go on the defensive side. I forgot to talk about the three stud linebackers at Stanford. Chase Thomas, Shane Scove, and Trent M Murphy. This is probably arguably the best linebacking court in the nation coming into this year. Chase Thomas is a good rush in. He was actually second in the Pac-10 with sacks last season, eight and a half. And I like Shane Scove's play. He's going to be able to boost up his tackles this season. And also, he's a good play. He's going to develop to become better as a drop pad up back on linebacker and help um, um help the um the secondary and uh, the pass defense. I really like Scove a lot. I think he can be a good player to, for the defensive player of the year this season. Now I have a couple of incoming freshmen we need to talk about. Some fresh fish for you guys. Starting with the five-star safety, Shaq Thompson out of, uh, uh, for the Washington Huskies. This kid is a beast. He can play both the um, free safety and the strong safety. And I really like he can play either way. And he's a smart player. He's also a good baseball player. Is that I think he's going to play two sports while he is at Washington. At Stanford, they they lost two good um, linemen and David DeCastro and Jonathan Martin, who are both now in the NFL. But they picked up a good offensive tackle and Andres Pete. Keep an eye on this kid. He might not get too much playing time, but this season, because he's a freshman, but look out for him for the next couple of seasons. And I think he's going to get great playing time anyway because he's just a good offensive tackle. And I think he's going to help. Um, boost some um, depth in that offensive line because they'll offer losing two great um, offensive linemen Latin, um, to the draft this past season. Also in Washington State, we need to talk about um, Gabriel Marsh. This kid is a great athlete, 185 pounds. Might need to bulk up just a little bit, but he's an outstanding cornerback. But I believe Mike Leach, the coach for the Cougars, is going to use to try to use him as a receiver to complement Marquise Wilson. I think he's going to try him out at that, but I think he's going to be a better corner overall. I need to talk about my um, preseason awards. Player of the year offensively, got to go with Matt Barkley. Come on now. Over 3,000 yards for the past couple of seasons. 33 touchdowns last year. This kid, actually more than 33 touchdowns last season. And I think he's going to be that go-to guy for um, the 2013 NFL Draft, the number one quarterback. But we will see. Um, defensive player of the year, I'm going to go with Shane Scove, out of the linebacker, out of um, um the Stanford Cardinals. This kid, he could drop back just a little bit. He had a pretty um, decent game against the Oklahoma State Cowboys and that Fiesta Bowl and their loss. But I think without that experience, and plus with Chase Thomas rushing in the way, he could uh, actually get more tackles this season and drop back and might even get a couple of interceptions. So I'm going to have to go with him as a sleeper for this year's Defensive Player of the Year. Newcomer Player of the Year, I'm going to go with Shaq Thompson out of um, Washington. This kid is a big kid, and I really think in three years he's going to join the NFL. He might not be there for four years. He is that, that talented. Come on. Five stars according to Rivals.com. Got to give him too much credit on that. Now, I got to talk about a couple of games to talk about, of, of games to watch this season. Starting on September 8th, Washington's going to be playing at LSU. Now, they, hopefully, they're going to pull that upset against the Bayou Tigers, but anything can happen. I highly doubt it, but they're hoping to pull that upset and get better luck than Oregon did last season. September 15th, two big games to watch. Stanford's going to be at home against USC. That's going to be a good um, South 
South um, Division team against our good North Division team. And also, California is going to be playing at the Ohio State Buckeyes. I think that's a good game to watch. October 6th, Washington is going to be playing at Oregon. I think these two is going to, is going to be between Brian Bennett and Keith Price between um, to, to determine who will win that game. October 13th, Stanford is going to be playing at Notre Dame. For the past couple of seasons, they've been having great matches. And Notre Dame is, probably, is one of the top teams coming into this year. And they have a strong, hard schedule this year. And Stanford is going to be another hard team that they're going to be playing against. October 20th, Stanford is going to be playing at Cal. An early rivalry game. We've got to call that game out. November 3rd, November the 3rd, USC is going to be playing at home against the Oregon Ducks. Last season, USC came into Oregon and beat them. And Oregon's going to look to, to avenge that game. And this could be a preview of the Pac-12 championship. But anything can happen. November 17th, Oregon's going to be playing against Stanford. I think this could be the um the, to determine who will win the North Division of the Pac-12 championship. Cal can also be a good sleeper at that for that North Division, but I think it could be between these two teams, and whoever wins this matchup will probably play for the Pac-12 championship. So that's the, all the key games that you need to watch this year. Also on November 24th, USC is going to be playing against Notre Dame, another big game for the, the, the Fighting Irish. They're looking to boost up more wins this season and help out Brian Kelly and get more wins this year. Now, overall, the winner this year for the South, from, coming from the South Division, I'll have to go with the USC Trojans. I think they have a clear shot of going undefeated this season. And my sleeper this year, I'm going to go with the Cal Bears. Why? I think they have a decent quarterback in Zach Maynard, and he has an outstanding receiver, number one receiver in Keenan Allen, who I'm definitely going to be looking at for this for uh, next season's NFL draft. And they have an underrated running back in E.C. Um, Solafelli. He he was fifth in the conference with 1,322 yards rushing. And what those that um triple um that three-headed monster between the two the three, three guys, I think a lot of people are sleeping on them. I think they're going to cause problems this year and might sleep their way for the Pac-12 championship. I highly doubt it. But but like I said, they're my sleeper. I'm definitely going to keep an eye on them. I think they have a decent team with a good quarterback and Zach Maynard. Now, next time I'm going to catch you guys is on Saturday to give you a preview of the ACC Conference. Thank you for watching today's vlog from Pro Football Exclusive. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.